Okay, so it's only been about 48 hours since we've had this thing fully assembled, and I'm gonna give you a newcomer's perspective on the Annette A8. So right off the bat, I gotta say, this is a great little machine, great printer to receive you know, from Gearbest, which I greatly appreciate. But if you invest money into this, you're definitely not gonna be disappointed. But I do wanna go through, I'm gonna be completely honest and go through everything I ran into, frustrations or you know, neat little things that I found out. I wanna point out, it took me, let's see, I think it was about 11 hours to assemble. That's with some breaks in there, like 20 minute breaks here and there. I think I took about two. Uh, total or you know I was eating something while <laughs> assembling it or drinking some coffee but definitely keep yourself well hydrated while doing this you'll kind of go crazy if you get too hyped up on caffeine get frustrated with this I'd say just uh, maintain to, uh, hydration while doing this because I was drinking energy drinks and, and coffee and I kind of wild out a little bit at towards the end <laughs> because I just wanted to print something I, I it's so exciting so this is new to me this is my first printer ever I've wanted one for the last three years three or four years now. I, when I was in Arizona and you guys knew me for doing Xbox mods and doing BJ reworks, I so badly wanted a 3D printer, but that's okay. We have it now and we're gonna tell you a little bit about it. So right off the bat, I think what uh, really took a lot of time was peeling this stuff off of the protectant. You know, when they cut it, or I don't know how they cut it with a laser or if they cut it with a special machine saw, water, I don't know how they did it, but I know that I've seen stuff when it gets cut, it's got this protectant stuff on it here. And taking it off, some people are better than I, but uh, taking this stuff off can be kind of a pain, but it's worth. I mean, look at it, it's a uh, nice shiny black, but if you wanna skip that, feel free, that will give you more hours to work with. You're not gonna sit there fidgeting around breaking your nails off. <laughs> My nails are pretty short anyway, so that's why it was a little harder for me. But uh, I'm sure there's little tools or you can spray it with something and peel it off easier than that. Anyways, that that's the main, that's the first thing, is peeling off all the protectant off the acrylic, I believe it is. That took a lot, or added a lot of time to it. So 11 hours, give or take a couple breaks, and then peeling that stuff off. Uh, another thing is sometimes they're interesting, there's little slots in all of this where the little bolt goes, uh, the bolt, and nut meets at the other end, putting the nut into the slot that uh, meets the bolt, that can take a little bit of fidgeting here and there, but not too bad, pretty easy. If you have something magnetic to hold the little uh, nut in the back, still what you put that through would probably be most helpful. Okay, so that's the first thing, is peeling that off and the little bolts and messing around. Some of the instructions on the USB, even though I'm very grateful that they do come with an SD card, USB reader thingamabobber, that's pretty sweet. But uh, some of the instructions, uh, I kind of got, it was getting late, some of the uh, assembly late at night. It was getting late and I'm like, wow, they, I, they don't show wires coming. I don't know why that bothered me, but some of the, uh, the home stoppers here, the little clicky switches, uh, they show, this one was, they showed the clicker on the inside and then it gets hung up on this. So I had to switch that around because I actually went to the Annette YouTube channel and watched the assembly and I saw that they did some things differently than they actually included uh, paper, uh, paper instructions, the PDF or whatever. So that's another thing I ran into that kind of got me and I, saw, I tend to be a little dyslexic so the little motor here that runs this horizontal belt, I put it on the front side because I wasn't paying attention so that's another thing. That's, that's a personal issue. So that's another thing we ran into. The uh, Another one we ran into was these horizontal stabilizers. When they go through here, they tend to, if you don't see them, like it's really quite difficult. Somebody on a forum was saying that you can drill these out, and I'd recommend that, or at least clear out. They're, they're pretty tight, and that you kind of carve through the plastic with these bars, these solid bars here. But I had it to where it was pushing too hard over on this... Uh, this metal pole right here, it's got the threading in it, it's kind of like a worm gear assembly thing and that goes into these little motors that are down below. But this was pressing a little too hard and it, this was way skewed off this way and it was causing it, once it went up a couple millimeters, it was seizing, causing uh, this to stay where it was, it couldn't raise itself up and it was drilling, it was like slamming the extruder nozzle through the layer had already laid down, so that was kind of a bummer. That, that took like an hour for me to actually free up and get perfect. That's because um, I, I lack of sleep, 
after the, what was it, almost 22 hours of being up assembling this, the next day I got up four hours after sleeping four hours, got back up to work on this. So that's why uh, maybe some of the times to you seem a little longer, but um, the excitement and the lack of sleep, adrenaline overpowering logic kind of thing. So I was just super excited to get this uh, up and running. So that's why I ran into some stuff, just kind of slammed it together, if you will. <laughs> so that's one thing to think of is make sure everything's even and the pressure isn't skewed to one side or another. Uh, that's why I ran into this belt down here. These belts are really tough. They're like wire enforced rubber belts. They're pretty hard to cut, actually, even with a nice little snipper like this. So I was noticing under the H frame, the H frame underneath this uh, bed, the heated bed here, there's little things that hold the belt that clip. The belt goes in and it, and it like screws tight to the bottom side of that. Well, the way it's set up, the belt kind of goes to one side when it's down this way and one side to it. Uh, one side of the pulley down there or not a pulley you know the little the motor mount there so what's happening is the belt top and bottom it's not it kind of is skewed a little bit in one one area or another like if you go back it looks like this when you come forward it looks like that just because of how it's set up underneath it's not exactly straight up and down they're not like this right on top. So what I did was I modded, I actually screwed a little hole in the belt. Yes, that's kind of weird and it's a weird mod, but I did it so one end, I did it to the back end here so I can move it over a little bit. They make 3D printed parts so you can actually customize the placement of the belt underneath this, uh, underneath this um, H-frame, which is underneath the, the heat bed here. So I aligned the belts as best as I could. I went up and down and saw like which way it was and it's the best it's going to get right now the way i did it to where the belts are perfect perfectly uh, straight with each other the reason i did that is because i was noticing this bed was coming up but when it, it would smoothly the motor would smoothly push it out like this but when it brought it back it would hang you couldn't really tell but i could looking at it it, ha it was having difficulty pulling it back very slightly and when it's doing really delicate uh, layers it will actually make it look weird on the side they'll be jagged and jittery it, it kind of looks like it's distorted if you will so i matched those belts up as best i could and now it's working a lot better i actually felt it when i put it all back together i could just feel feel the bed move back and forth silky smooth i was really pleased by that so those are some of the things that i ran into another thing this isn't really a problem at all they they are nice enough the uh Annette and Gearbest are, you know, the kit. They're nice enough to include like a uh, little stand for the filament and a nice threaded rod here. The thing is, the filament has a big hole in it, like you can see here on the side. It has a big hole and uh, it just kind of rocks around on it. You know, it pulls and kind of does this little swing thing on there. So I'm like, hmm, you know, I have a 3D printer, I can do whatever I want. And of course, Thingiverse, I looked up, I'll include the link in the description, but it's uh, their wedges. So they perfectly fit onto this rod, and they're kind of like a cone, if you will. And it, uh, you can tighten them up nicely, evenly, and it will make it perfect. This rotates nice and centered, perfect. It's, it's great, actually, without a bearing. It's very smooth. So let's talk about some of the tiny little upgrades I did. That, that's not really an... Uh, I guess you could call that an upgrade. And the second thing I did was... Uh, this wasn't really necessary, this little filament sta uh, like a holder slash stabilizer. I just did it so it didn't curly cue all over the place, because sometimes this will swing... When this is loose, like without any tension, it'll just swing. The next step I've got to do is make a little uh, spool holder that sits up here and it'll feed it directly down. But that's just, this was just to see it print and all that good stuff. So that's kind of some of the little things. Oh yeah, that's right. I did a nozzle upgrade too because the white one, I actually had to cut the end down. See the end, I had to snip it down. You can see it's uneven because it was going so low. It was actually on, it was sitting right parallel with the... Uh, extruder nozzle. So what that did was, you know, it bumps around and goes fast. If it moved any ever so slightly down, it would start scooping up the, the print. Like, the, you know, sometimes that the first couple layers are just outlines and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> that didn't work out too well. So I cut it down. It worked well. And I just decided to look around Thingiverse and see what people were saying. The best reviews, the best likes. And uh, this I printed, actually, not by... I just wanted to see it print this. I thought this was cool. I like that uh, ring, like cooler. I thought that looked cool as heck. So I printed that out. Liked all the little designs, and it was so fun to watch it print this thing. If if you just want to watch something print that's really cool, it's one of these uh, cooler nozzles. Well, I found out that this thing actually, it's snug at first, but when it starts going fast and it's printing stuff, 
uh, it will move. That's before I started using tape on here, and this one has a little duct tape just, just to be sure on the outside to keep it where it's supposed to be level. But this thing fell down and it ruined a couple prints. It actually ruined, um, ruined this. I was making a, a filament holder, a desk holder that it rolls on these things right here, and you can see that it jumped. It, it fell down and popped and jumped and it caused the print to skew over. I cut off what was over here hanging off, but just to mess around with it, that was kind of a bummer. So that was kind of saddening, but that's okay. I figured, ah, you know, screw it. I've got a metal bar. Let's just print the wedges. And that took, uh, took a little bit, I think an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. Most of the printing you do on this for little things you want, or not little, but decent sized things, it's always two hours or hour and 45 minutes to two hours and 45 minutes. That seems to be the, the going rate for prints for stuff that you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I want to print that right off of that. Those are the upgrades I did. Uh, did a nozzle upgrade, did the wedge kind of upgrade to keep this centered, and did the little filament holder up here, which there'll be a different one once I do the actual holder right up here. So those are everything I did right out of the box. Uh, you can see some of the prints here. The, this is something I did last night. I got a toothpaste squeezer slash, you know, roller upper thing. That's pretty cool. And I wanted to show you what the belt kind of did, like when the belt was jumping back and forth. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's certain areas where it's perfectly smooth. And then you'll see areas where it starts jittering right there. You can kind of see, if you're looking down like this, you can see that it's it pulling back. You can see where it catches every time you see little lines. So that's why I spent extra time today uh, moving the belt around and uh, trying tensions. That's another thing with tensions. I just go barely to where you see something flex, like the motor on the mount or this thing. That seems to work best for me, where you tension the belt to where before anything moves. Just by just by visual visual cues and stuff like that, not by actual tension, you know, like qu uh, quality or what, what is that? Uh, the tensioner, pressure, or whatever, any all that stuff. You can make 3D printed parts that you can tension the belt up just by using a little screw. There's all kinds of stuff. There's so many upgrades you can do to this machine. But for just doing very superficial prints, it, it works phenomenally here. So that's pretty much it, guys. Just wanted to show you first impressions and the little upgrades I did. Johnny, why do you have a razor blade here? Well, this razor blade is super helpful when you use the tape and then you just shear off or you just clear off the tape at the ends, shape it up real nice. And you can get little holders, you can make little holders for it too. In the future, lastly, what I'll say here, I'm gonna do the upgrades that uh, Modbot has done in his videos, which I definitely recommend you go check out on the Annette AA here. He's got quite a few instructional videos and just overall, you know, like information on the machine. But I do wanna do the, um, the hotbed or heat bed, whichever, the MOSFET upgrade, I definitely wanna do that. I definitely want to upgrade the power supply. There's a couple things I want to do here with it and get it upgraded. There's so many cool things. There's other YouTubers out there that actually cover multiple upgrades for this. Modbot has great videos on that, and there's also some other guys that go crazy with it. They get uh, you know these neat little robotic uh, like enclosures for the cables. This is just right out of the box, pretty much. So that's why I wanted to give you my first impression for having about 48 hours playing with it. It's great. I give it a uh, 9 out of 10, once again, uh, 9 out of 10, uh, the reason why I don't give 10 out of 10 is because of um, some of the things you kind of got to mess with a little bit, and I think if you're just getting into it for the first time, you don't have a lot of mechanical background, this could get frustrating in certain areas. Other than that, it uh, puts together well, it just, it's a little tedious. One guy I laughed on YouTube, what did he say? He said, uh, some people take 12 hours, some people take 7 days, or, <laughs> or something like that, and I laughed because I didn't even think about actually taking my time with this. I just wanted to get it up and running so bad. So you can do it. 11 hours. That was with a couple breaks. Plenty of caffeine, uh, excitement, adrenaline, definitely. A couple other things that I had in mind. You want to print yourself an extruder button for this to feed your filament. There's a setting in the actual thing. Oh, that's another thing I was going to say. Repetier. I, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Repetier host is what I'm using and I definitely recommend it over switching the SD card back and forth. That's all I did. I was so excited. I only cared about the SD card and I just kept popping it out, mounting it to the computer, unmounting it to the computer, mounting it back on this and that got annoying. I had no idea the difference between uh, G-Code or STL. I had no idea about Slicer. I was just freaking out like doing the test uh, <laughs> as in good freaking out. I was uh, doing all the testing and stuff like using the test files to print just so I could see it work. But then I'm like, man, I want to print my stuff. You know, I want to print this, you know, toothpaste squeezer. I want to print a new nozzle. 
Yeah, I just want to print stuff like upgrades and wedges. I just want to do all that stuff I liked on uh, Thingiverse. So I did a lot of research. Uh, you definitely want to grab Repeater if you're going to use this. USB, it's such a nice little program. Props to those guys that develop that stuff. It's great. You can control, like, there's so much you can control, like, live, too, right from Repeater. So, yeah, uh, let's see. We did the SD card for a while, then we had to go USB. It's just so much easier, for sure. But what I, what I want to say is definitely print yourself an extruder, like, spring button for this thing. you got to press that down and feed your filament in the first time. Once you get it... Once you get a nice kilogram roll, you know, fed onto there, you can set it and forget it, if you will. As long as there's not super tension and it doesn't, you know, like, it can't pull any filament into it. You'll see, when you're putting it together, there's a, like, gear that chews into the side of the filament and pushes it down on a, another bearing, a nice little thing. So you'll see it, once you get it down through, it's clamped in there real well. There, it's pretty hard to get it out. So print yourself a little button that will help your thumb. Uh, <laughs> I sliced up my hands quite a bit with just, you know, all my tools and just really using a lot of pressure on certain things. But definitely get yourself a little button for that. I don't have one yet, I'm gonna do that later since I haven't had to do it since I've loaded this spool on there. That's another upgrade. The wedge upgrade's gonna be great for you. And I'll do a video later on of what I did underneath here, but you can do, there's all kinds of information on YouTube about uh, making this machine work better right off the bat. Since I was so inexperienced, if I was an experienced user, I think I would have looked at all that stuff beforehand or I would have taken my time but since I'm new to it, this was a little, I didn't realize the extent of, you know, this binding up. I thought the motors might be strong enough to, if it's off a little bit, it will just power through with some lubrication. But no, you actually got to have it shaped up pretty well, which is standard, you know, for intricate mechanics like this. But yeah, just a little belt recentering, this uh, rod recentering a little bit here. That's all I had to do to get it going pretty well. The last thing I'll say here is getting your bed adjustment is critical. They say, people are like, well, what is balance? Oh, what do you mean balance the bed? Well, you gotta get this bed really close to the extruder nozzle for it to work correctly. If it's far away, it just kind of dumps the filament out. It'll kind of string out. You wanna get it, there's a sweet spot to where the uh, extruder nozzle will lay it down perfect on top of the bed. So all my old business cards, I use them as the uh, adjustment. But I've actually been, believe it or not, you can do it by eye if you get a good feel for uh, what's going on. But you lay this down on there, make sure it's not warped or anything, you want it flat. And if this tugs a little bit under that nozzle, like where it's at home, they call it home where it drops down and then hits all the stops. When you um, disable the steppers, which are, you know, the motors, you'll be able to move this around. You can move this head around and put this card down and you use these four screws, they're uh, wing nuts spring and a screw and you bring this down or up and you want that uh, nozzle to be as close to this bed as possible without like smashing or dragging really hard. Essentially you can take a business card or a sheet of paper, some people do paper, I think the paper one it gives you more of an accurate uh, uh, depth. But you can use the business card and uh, that works pretty good. But I've just been doing it by eye, believe it or not. I've been doing it by feel and eye. Like, I can tell when the nozzle just barely grazes the top of this. And some of you may be like, well, that's not correct. I can understand. If you say that's not correct, I can understand that. But that's what I've been doing anyways. And my prints have been coming out actually pretty darn well for just kind of winging it, if you will, winging it. <laughs> but that's it, guys. Just want to give you a uh, first impression, a little a little info on what I ran into being a complete newcomer. I appreciate you watching. We're, we're going to have tons of videos in the future. We're pretty much going to turn into a 3D printing channel uh, until I get into inventing and designing later on. I'm just kidding. We're not going to turn into a total 3D printing channel, but I, mainly the mechanics and just the uh, outlook on things. Not so much as the super nitty-gritty, but all the stuff that I find interesting or might be helpful to, the, to those of you that are into this kind of thing, I'm gonna put that out video-wise, just like I did uh, on reworking and stuff like that. That's my main goal is to get you going as quick as possible and kind of provide some information th that I ran into. Just my, uh, this, I don't think that everything I run into that everyone else is going to, but uh, I know that uh, some of you will. That pretty much wraps it up, guys. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. We'll have more videos soon on the Annette A8 here. Uh, upgrades and just how I went through them. Not really tutorials or anything, but just, you know, how I felt about this and that. Alright guys, you take it easy. We'll catch you later. See you guys.